Hello everyone, how are you guys doing today? This is May 1st, so it's now lo no longer going to be May, or gonna be May, as everybody likes to joke, as it's, a joke is clearly very, very old at this point, but people still make it every year. It's harmless enough. Welcome to Brad's Bad Show About Games. My name is Brad, and I am not currently working on Call of Duty, but at this rate, I might be the only human being left who isn't. And we will get to that shortly. But before we do, got a lot of Fortnite stuff to talk about. Um, some confusing stuff. But uh, a, lot of, a lot of rewards coming this month. Some of which you should already have if you were part of the Fortnite crew. Because this month's crew benefits are numerous. <laughs> so let's start off. Uh, last episode, uh, they had just uh, revealed the Neymar Jr. skin and had started to tease out the new crew member skin. And I was wondering, you know, is it going to be, could it be Hades? Because it's, you know, they're describing, you know, the underworld. Could it, but I knew people were like, nah, we don't really like collab skins in our crew past, you know. And um, I thought maybe it would be, it would be like some sort of a demon from the underworld. Eh, that was close, I think. Uh, but anyway, the name of the skin is Deimos. And he's clearly inspired, uh... From that sort of underworld, you know, sort of demon. I don't know exactly. It it seems like the name would uh, imply it's more, maybe more. Which I don't. I'm. I don't know anything about this, but uh, maybe it's more. I don't know. I can't. I'm, I'm having trouble finding the words I want to use, but um. I'd have to, I want to look that up. But anyway, clearly dark underworld, demon sort of person. Except they're wearing a mask. But the mask has like an aura. So, it looks like it's just a person wearing a mask. But, I don't know. Maybe this person isn't human and they're still wearing a mask or whatever. But anyway, overall, I like the skin. It's kind of simple, but... I like the black and the red color scheme. That always looks good. It's got two variants where you can, uh, there's a green and black, and then the there's a, the third one is green and black, but it glows. So, I kind of wish the, uh, there was another variant that was red that glows, but, eh, not a big deal. But, um, this, uh, whole set here comes with a pickaxe you can... Uh, choose between a two-handed axe or a single-handed axe. I think I prefer the single-handed axe. Just because it looks like, even though you can't wield the sword on his back for the back bling, uh, it looks like you could, like he would be physically able to. So if you had a one-handed axe and then he could pick up his sword, if you could do that, that would be kind of cool. But... I don't know. That's just, that's just me. Uh, you get a wrap with him. You get a loading screen, which is always fun to have. Disappointing, he doesn't have a glider. And I don't... I hate when they leave little pieces out. Like, I think that they should all have a glider or something. But, you know, this is... It's 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 me nitpicking. This is still, as far as the cosmetics, they're still good. And you get a lot. Of course, you'll get the V-Bucks whenever your payments go through. But that depends on when you... You know, with uh, when the individual paid. So that's not, you know, everybody gets the skin on the last day of the month. But, uh, uh, the, I mean, for the previous month. So this is the May crew. So you get the last day of April. But, um, you get that. There's a uh, current, there's a deal going on right now for crew members where you get three months of free Spotify. And on top of that, this time in the crew, uh, for the crew, you get permanent access to Save the World, which I don't know much about, but I think that's a really cool uh, thing that they threw in there for people. 
This is the sixth month, I think. They've been doing this. I think December was the first. I'm trying to think back. Let me think back. We had Galaxia. And then was Green Arrow. Who was it after that? Give me a minute to think. Then was I... I think it was... Crap, I can't remember who it was. I think it was V or Vi. I think that one may have been the third one. Then I think it was Lambro. Then it was Ally. And now it's Deimos. So, and people have been trying to suggest that there are hints that that the skins are based on battle pass skins or battle passes or some or some sort of theme or whatever. I don't. I mean, that's cool if it is, but you know, that's that's just something that they like to do. They like to tease and hint at things. But anyway, uh, the Save the World is a big get, I think, for crew members. Because, like I said, you know, I was interested in it. I don't really know much about it. I do know that, you know, it's supposed to be pretty different from Battle Royale in that, like, I think the characters can talk. The skins have classes assigned to them. Uh, you can get rewards for Save the World. So it's it, it seems like it's it's like a completely different game with the same sort of, you know, shooting functions. But there's, it's, it's. It's its own thing, though. So, I'm surely I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna spend some time and save the world. Maybe after I finish recording the show, but um, but yeah, lots of stuff in the crew pack this month. If you haven't, uh, if you're not a member, you might want to get in there, especially during this month because guess what? We're not through talking about the benefits. Ah, see, there was one more. I didn't forget. I was just uh, fooling you. But um, apparently every Tuesday during May, you will uh, members will get a special bonus every single Tuesday. And they said to check your lockers. So I now I don't know what that means. I don't know, like, is it going to be just like raps? Is it going to be, you know, some little emoticon things because uh, or is it going to be like little sprays because some of those things I don't particularly care for like the sprays I don't care about the emoticons I don't care about like they're just like they they show up and like you spray something on the wall okay there it is great or if you throw an emoticon out it's sort of there and then it's gone I don't know it, it just those have never really impressed me the way like the actual emotes do the the emote dances or poses or whatever that you can actually make your character do you know and I would much rather have like uh, an emote a, uh, a wrap a loading screen a back bling you know pickaxe or a full skin which I don't think we're gonna get a full skin but hey I could be wrong but this is obviously very good that they're trying to find new ways to load up the battle passes because I'm guessing that the overwhelming response to because they've been trying to get feedback on this thing and my guess is that people just said like hey add stuff like this is cool it's cool to get the skins and all but you know it's it's still not necessarily something we want to keep paying for month after month now, I'm fine with it because I don't want to miss anything. And 12 bucks is cheap enough, I think. But um, I do think that um, the more they put in there, obviously, and it's all at the same price, that the better a deal you're getting. And this is the best deal you've got right now with, you know, the whole skin set for Deimos. You get the V-Bucks, you get Save the World, you get the Spotify stuff, and then you if you're... For this month, you get a free goodie every Tuesday. So, tons of stuff for 10 bucks. Oh, the bad. 12 bucks, my bad. Um, very good deals. And who knows what else they may add, you know. I think what most people will be answering, which I think the thing with Save the World is, is that, like, it used to, you could get V-Bucks in the game, in that game mode, but now you can't anymore. So they've replaced it. I think it has its own currency. Like I said, I don't really know much about Save the World. 
other than it's its own sort of thing. But definitely looking forward to checking that out, seeing just how different it is and how the game operates. Should be cool. Uh, but before we move on to other topics, we got to talk about the controversy over the newest uh, decrypted skin from the files. Recently, they had the big update, of course. And one of the encrypted files got decrypted, and we found out that come the day of the release of the second Batman Fortnite comic issue, the shop is going to gain a Batman Zero skin. Now, this is obviously the one that looks like uh, the same Batman design that looks like some of the comic book artwork we've seen. And it is called Batman Zero. And it comes with this glider and a pickaxe and a loading screen. Now, the confusion, of course, is that everyone had assumed that this Batman was going to be the armored Batman Zero skin that we had been told that if you get all six of the codes from the comics, if you enter all six in, you will be rewarded with the bonus armored Batman Zero skin. Okay, that's cool. Then we later found out that the bonus cosmetics from the comics will not be exclusive to the comics because the comics are only available in the U.S. I don't even know if they're available in Canada, so they may not even be available in the entirety of North America. But at the very least, if you live outside of North America, you can't get these uh, bonus cosmetics. So to make up for that, they're going to put them in the shop and let people buy them. Which I think is fair when you have some when you're offering a bonus service like that, and there's just no way to get the uh, get that content to people, you know, who don't live in a certain place. Then you give them an alternative. It probably it's going to cost you more than it will for the people who are going to get the bonus, but sometimes it's it's just a sacrifice that people are going to have to deal with. It sucks, but. You can't really help how, like, international laws and stuff and all those kinds of regulations, you know, interfere with things. So, just like in China, you can't have Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is illegal <laughs> in China. So, it sucks, but that's just the way it is. But at least people will be able to get the bonus cosmetics from the comic. Uh, but this particular skin here, everybody's like, is this the Batman skin we're supposed to get like and if it is why are people getting it like two months ahead of time than the people who are gonna you know who are paying for the comic service or to are buying the comics when this is supposed to be like an exclusive thing or this was like the big bonus but now you could just buy it right out well what's uh, let me make sure I get his name I think it's, it's his name is Ali G is that is that his name? Is that how he, uh... Let's see, Ali. Ali. Ali G. I said, uh, A. Uh... I'm checking his uh, Twitter. So it's it's uh. I've never watched this guy's videos. I don't know if it's. I, I think it's Ali A, or. I don't think it would be Ali A. See, I feel dumb. I just, I don't watch many streamers. And I feel dumb. Even, uh, it just... Ugh. Let me see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this up. Because this kind of... Sucks. That I, I, I hate... Not, uh... I hate not knowing... This... 
Hopefully this ad isn't getting recorded. It says my de uh, desktop audio is off, so I should be able to. Hold up. Okay, listening to it, it sounds like he's saying Ollie. <clears throat> like saying Ollie. So, I thought that was how he... Ollie A. Uh, now, he got uh, gifted the skin early by Epic. And as, as you do, I think Fresh also got it. Fresh and Laser Beam. You know, of course the big streamers are going to get the skin early so they can show it off. I mean, that's just, that's just how that works. But, um... He said he was told that this is not the armored Batman variant that the comics grant. However, there were some people who were emailing Epic's, I guess, help or customer help or whatever, trying to get clarification, and people were getting contradicting answers. And some people were being told that this is the armored Batman, and some were told it's not the armored Batman. So who knows? At this point, I haven't seen any clarification but I think the ongoing theory at the moment is that this is not going to be the armored variant that comes out with the comics. And that makes sense. Like if... Like if the idea is... You know, this is going to be a, a story that takes part in the... Because we already have seen... Uh, this Batman hut is now in the game. There's a little hut with Batman's logo on it. It's in the game. And uh, there's not much there. It's sort of like the beginning. It's sort of like when uh, the, they're in the Marvel season where Iron Man had his sh little shed. He was working on stuff and then eventually teleported all of New York and Stark Enterprises there. Uh or Stark Industries, whichever one it was. But um, I don't think we're going to get that in this because it looks like Batman is going to be mostly um, working with what he's got and what he can find on the island, and which that's that's more of his style. He's going to adapt to the situation, you know, with the resources he has at hand. He's not going to need to teleport his uh, entire mansion and Batcave to the island just to uh, figure this out. At least I don't think that's going to happen. But, um, anyway. But there was some confusion. I, I thought that, I thought at first that this pickaxe and this glider were also part of the rewards, but apparently they're not. They have different names than the uh, rewards for the month, uh, for the comics that they come out with. Like, specifically, the final item is supposed to be a back a batarang pickaxe which this is not this is like a grappler uh it's like bat grappler uh pickaxe or something so it's a different pickaxe i'm just confused i'm still kind of confused but i think that the idea that these are going to be standalone it's a standalone set for everybody to sort of get a taste of the story and to say, you know, here, here's something for people who maybe don't want to go buy the comics or whatever. They can at least get this Batman skin. I think that's fine. And if there's something that happens in-game to tie into all that, like more POIs or uh, maybe some uh, NPCs drop, you know, will Batman be there? Will Harley be there? Who knows? But um, I also think this leads uh, credit to the idea that even though Deathstroke uh, is getting a glider is one of the rewards in the comics. You will see a Deathstroke uh, set come out. So, I guess the question is like, will we get a new Catwoman set? There's supposed to be a new Catwoman uh, design coming. So I don't know. This was a little bit confusing. Hopefully, in time, they'll either directly address it or the answers will be revealed, and we can put all this behind us and enjoy some good old Batman content. Because I think the skin and the stuff overall, the glider, everything, it looks cool. Um, I got no problem with it. 
I am curious though. I do like people pointed out like in the one of the Jonesy snapshot uh, skins is wearing Batman's gauntlet. I've already talked about that. Here he's clearly missing the the uh, it looks like the bladed end of his gloves there. So and again, look the utility belt that he's wearing here is the same one that Jonesy's wearing in that fifth and sixth snapshot of himself. Uh, clearly Jonesy is involved in the story and I'm curious, will he show up in the comics? Will, uh, will Jonesy maybe show up on the Island? I mean, who knows? This comic series runs through to the scheduled end of the season, which is still, I think set at June 8th. Uh, this is May 5th. First, so we've only got five weeks left. It kind of feels crazy to think that the season's already almost over. But um, that's still over a month, so it's technically not almost over, but we're getting there. But yeah, uh, Batman stuff on the way. This is just uh, the next little bit is just sort of a fun little thing. It's sort of out of, uh, completely random, but... And uh, Mario Party how has online play. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Uh, this game came out forever ago, and it's only just now you can play online with friends and play games and stuff. Uh, this should have... They really should have done this when the whole pandemic started. Like, this could have been a game that really, like, thrived from people being at home more often. And it's just weird. The what a, what strange timing is like. The the at least U.S. Um, I can't really speak for how the other countries are going because from everything I know is like it seems like other countries have more or less had a better hold on this thing. There were a lot of countries that months ago were starting to let people back into stadiums and stuff, but the U.S. is just now getting to that point where, like, the CDC is starting to relax, you know, uh, su suggested, you know, limits on things or like, oh, well, it's okay for you to go back into public. Just, you know, wear a mask if you're going to be, you know, within a certain distance of each other on the inside. If you're outside, if you're outside and you're not like standing immediately next to somebody, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. You know, it's, they're trying to leave it up to people to do the right thing. I don't think that's going to work really. But, you know, more and more people are getting vaccinated. It's slowed down. But, you know, not to get off on that, you know, not to go off on that tangent completely. But it's just such weird timing that as the U.S. is starting to try to get out of pandemic mode, you know, whether you agree with that or not, for them to do this update for Mario Party at the end of it or the perceived end of it, it's just weird. They, they really should have done this uh, at the start and given people more incentive to have something to do. You know, th this would have at least given people another game to play at home and may have sold some Mario Party uh, uh, copies. So, I don't know. That's really the only criticism I have here because I think this is a good update. They game needed it. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess better late than never. It's just weird timing. Uh, some other news, if I can get the... I forgot a piece of news. I um, At least almost. Uh, let me see if I can fix this real quick, because I almost forgot. Zoom in on this comic artwork here, and you will see who's in it, and then we will talk about who's in it. Okay, there you have it. Uh, yeah. Can we get a little bit more? There, there's most of them. Uh... Apparently, there might be some rumblings from the studio who does, like, Mortal Kombat and, I think, the uh, Injustice games. They're working on a new Marvel game. And so, a lot of people are very hopeful that maybe, just maybe, that means... Um... 
a new Marvel vs. Capcom game? Maybe a Marvel vs. DC game? Very interesting stuff. But see, if it is a Marvel vs. Capcom game, then, you know, if since it's by the Injustice people, by the Mortal Kombat people, would it still play like uh, Marvel? Like, because that's like, the gameplay is part of the appeal. Yes, the big roster is great, but, like, it's playing that game. Like, I don't know, like, I've played a little bit of Injustice 2, and I just, it's certainly not my favorite kind of fighting game. So, I, I would much rather play, you know, Power Rangers. If you like, if you're going to put me, you know, if you're going to give me a fighting game to play, like, I'm going to rank Injustice 2 just uh, as a, the way it plays, I would much rather play pretty much any other fighting game. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't like the battle system of that game. Maybe it's just because I haven't spent a lot of time in it. But, either way, I do think the in, the uh, the prospect of a new Marvel vs. Capcom game in itself is cool. Also, the possibility of DC vs. Marvel as a fighting game series. Like, I don't know, like... That's interesting. Right now, the only place you can pit DC and Marvel characters against each other, I think, is Fortnite. At least in any official capacity. Like, this comic book here, though, is like a legit crossover comic from, like, forever ago. I mean, but you rarely ever see this kind of thing. So it will be interesting to see it, what comes of this uh, new development. If anything at all. But... Or is it just going to be a new Marvel game? Just like a, just a gen, uh, general Marvel game. Which could be interesting, but like the Avengers game kind of just sputtered out. Everybody just thought it sucked. So, who knows? But I, I guess we'll just have to wait to see. I certainly would love a new Marvel vs. Capcom game. Uh, Marvel 4, that would be great. Bring in some uh, good Capcom characters too. So, so who knows? I guess we'll find out at some point. And now to get on to the final topic I want to talk about because it's more of a rant, I guess. But it looks like Activision has officially... Did I say officially? <laughs> officially has decided to put all their eggs into one basket and now they have gone all in on Call of Duty and screw everything else apparently. <laughs> because the studio behind like Spyro and Crash Bandicoot is now working on uh, Call of Duty. I, I, I can't remember who it was. Some verified account but they said something to the effect of last they had heard Almost every uh, available studio under Activision was working on Call of Duty at the moment. And I, I assume that implies nothing else. Like right now, their sole focus is, is Call of Duty. And that sucks for so many different reasons. I mean, I've talked about the attempted revival here of Spyro the Dragon and Crash Bandicoot as, you know, an ongoing franchise that supposedly there was a desire to see these two become a running, you know, to be running icons for, you know, a new generation of platformer games. Basically, to, to, like, to just, I guess no other way to say it, but just to bring them back and be like, hey, you, you, want, it, you want more Spyro? Here's more Spyro. You want more Crash? Here's more Crash. And that sucks because Crash just came out and everybody seemed to be pretty ex uh, excited about Crash 4. And I think that, I think there was a pretty good call for people, or a pretty big call for people wanting another Spyro the Dragon game after the remake trilogy came out. And I, I don't know if I'm going to still put this on my wish list for E3, but I was going to put, I was going to hope that a, a new Spyro game was going to get announced at E3 this year. But who knows? I mean, I guess it could still happen, but it seems like it's just not going to. I mean, I just can't figure out why you would have all of your studios working on one game. It just it makes no sense. 
And I didn't see anybody say that this was a good idea. And I mean, I, I jokingly said on Twitter, like, you know, like, oh, sure, great, wonderful. The only, the only video game that's going to exist in the future is the one that the U.S. military uses to recruit kids with. <laughs> like, it's just... I don't get it, man. Like, I mean, I, I guess I do to an extent. I, Call of Duty's popular, but we all know of all the rumors and how it's a, a joke. How Call of Duty's main audience is like 12-year-old boys. And how people have always said you can't go into a game of uh, Call of Duty with random people without hearing some uh, little kid swearing and throwing out slurs. Like, it's just... It's just terrible. I mean, I've seen people like, like I think the Yo Video Games guys like Call of Duty, and that's fine and dandy. Like, I've been curious about how it plays, like the the story of like going through like just a like re a play through the war from blah 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 year. And I'm like, no, no, thank you. I'd much rather, I'd much rather defeat evil demons and pilot spaceships and and. Step on monster turtles to kidnap the princess. I'd much rather play games like that than just slip through a you know a war that actually happened. I just don't care about it, but it just doesn't make sense. People bring it up, you know, like the rumored uh next uh was for Naughty Dog, I think. Like they they dropped development or passed on development for a new Jack and Daxter game for The Last of Us. And look what's happening there with uh, with that game. They're apparently remaking it, even though the original version is free-to-play for people who own a current-gen console, that or the next-gen console. I don't know if it's technically current-gen yet. It, sh it should be because it's out, but people... But, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm confused about timing of that stuff. It's the current gen now, it should be. But I think most people are still sticking with, like, their Xbox Ones and their PS4s at the moment. But, uh, I don't know. I just hate to see something like this because, like I said, you know, I I just finished a Spiral the Dragon playthrough of the old PS1 version and hope at some point to jump into the remake trilogy. I've beaten the first of the, uh, of the remake trilogies already. I just didn't record it. This was like... This was like when it was still like a recent release. Uh, but, um... And I've never... I've played a little Crash Bandicoot. But, you know, I just... It's the same... Like, why are you killing these characters that people love? It's the same thing. It's the same reaction I had when... Uh, everybody was so excited about Banjo and Kazooie being in Smash Brothers, and you know, everybody was saying like, "Hopefully, this means we'll get a new Banjo game," because look at how excited the entire world seems to be for these characters. Like, I've yet to see only I think Sephiroth has managed to get such a reaction, and I think that part of that was because nobody expected Sephiroth to be in the game, like at all. Like, like I sort of like like. I think I had him like as a like a like if I, if you could make it work, do it. That was sort of sort of how I was viewing Sephiroth, but I didn't think that it was like a, that he was a possible character. I thought like the sword would just be too big to work in a way that you know didn't break the game or whatever. But they made it work, and he he was in. And plus, I think it was just such a shock. But um, and the way they introduced him was really cool too. Uh, one, probably one of the best reveal trailers they've done, but, um, yeah, like, there, no, after all the hype for Banjo, Microsoft Rare said, no, there's, there's no real interest for us, we're not, we're not really gonna do a new Banjo, sorry. Like, why? Why? You have the feedback there, the people want it. Why would you not go ahead and do it? I just don't get it. Is Call of Duty just that popular that it dwarfs and just completely makes like 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 is it a is it a reasonable sacrifice to just cast Spyro and Crash Bandicoot into the abyss to keep Call of Duty going? 
Like I, I, I don't get it. It doesn't seem that way to me. Of course, I don't understand why they can't all exist. Why can't Call of Duty exist? Why can't there... Why is it that all of your studios have to be working on this one game? Like, why is that a necessity? Why can't you have... You know, why can't Call of Duty, Spyro, and Crash all exist at the same time? Like, like a lot of these big companies are making tons of money. I mean, uh, as, for the best of my knowledge, the gaming, uh, the gaming industry is humongously popular, or uh, not popular, but just profitable for the big companies. Like I said. I, I actually was surprised, though, to find out that Nintendo is actually Japan's highest, pro uh, most profitable company. I had no idea that Nintendo was that big. So I can only imagine what, like, Activision and some of these others are. I mean, I know Epic is worth, you know, tons of money. And Sony recently gave them 200 million bucks. So there's big money being thrown around. And where is it going, though? Is it just going to the, to the big wigs in the suits? To, to pat out their paychecks to give themselves bonuses because up oh, look at our game our game sold a lot of money therefore we deserve to give ourselves a bonus like that's all I can figure out because apparently it's not going to uh, br uh, bring in people different kinds of games but I don't know it, it just I want to see a new Spiral the Dragon game you know I would like to get into Crash Bandicoot at some point. We have a new Crash game. It seemed like it was a pretty, uh, like people were pretty excited about that game. So I, I just don't understand the decisions, man. But that's all I got for today. Didn't want to spend, you know, the last time I tried to do an episode and I said, you know, going to try to do a short show. It ended up going over an hour. So this time it actually is a short show. Um, I think I talked about everything I want to talk about. I almost missed talking about, uh, the potential Marvel game. So I got that in there real quick. Uh, Pokemon, uh, new Pokemon Snap just came out. So definitely looking to try that out too. Uh, but yeah, we're getting closer. Um, E3 is now officially, you could say is next month. So be getting those predictions ready. Uh, Start thinking about what you think you might want to see at E3. How's it going to play? Uh, God, what studio was it? Some studio just announced that they were not going to have a presentation ready for E3. And I can't remember who it was off the top of my head. Oh, I'm blanking. Oh, but anyway. Uh, still looking forward to E3. Always an exciting time. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got today. So I'm going to go figure out what uh, what to do next. Probably check out Fortnite Save the World for the first time. But anyway, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. Go check out all my other videos. And we will see you next time. Later. <laughs>